Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. We're a channel that's geared toward the new man and woman who's never been to the Philippines, but who has an interest in making a trip here. My 11 years of being affiliated with the Philippines doesn't make me an expert, but it does give me a unique perspective. And I like to share that with the new man and woman, or anyone really, if it's gonna make your trip here more enjoyable, above all things, more safer. I'm boots on the ground here. I mean, the center of all this is for your benefit. I live among the locals. I'm always going to give you the nitty gritty. That's just exactly what I'm seeing, what I'm living, and what I'm experiencing. I'm never going to sugarcoat that. It's not going to start today. I just want to give you some insight on why I've stayed in the Philippines. It has nothing to do with a woman. Thank you so much for stopping by. Enjoy the video. Welcome back to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. Thanks for stopping by again. I know why you came here. You came here for the same reason I did. And nobody was more shallow when they came here than me. I was skirt chasing. I wasn't trying to really meet anybody. I, I wasn't even trying to stay here. I just wanted to get as far away from the United States as I possibly can, just to see what it was like. Because most of my... Um, uh, vacation spots were somewhere around the United States. But this time I said, I'm going to go as far away from the United States as possible. And I came to the Philippines. And I tell you what, I had no idea what was waiting for me here. You know, nature with its perfect balance has made the Philippines one of the most volatile places on the planet with the typhoons, the earthquakes, the volcanoes but also one of the most beautiful and magnificent places on the planet. The Philippines is more than white sand beaches, guys. I'm telling you now. And that's what has kept me here. I remember I was in Cebu, and I was at Mavisa Gardens that I always tell you about, that Airbnb spot that I tell you about. And I was in the gym working out, and a guy walks in, and he was a foreigner, you know. Uh, and we, you know, we started a conversation, and I asked him, you know, where was his girlfriend from? I think something like that. Or what website did he meet his girlfriend on? Something stupid like that. And it was the guy that said to me, he said, I didn't come here for a woman. He said, I'm a diver, and I come here to improve my classification. He said, I can't afford it in America. He said, so I started doing my research, and it pointed me toward the Philippines with the quality of training, the the affordability of the training, and also the diving sites. He said, it's fast becoming one of the most popular in the world. He said, especially with the coral reefs being protected. And I mean, he went into detail about this and man, he blew me away. I was like, wow, I thought this guy was just a typical male tourist, you know, coming over to meet a woman, you know, have a good time, go to the clubs and go back home. But no, he was going to be there for six months because I guess diving, and, and if any divers are listening, help me out with this. I, I, I guess divers are, they have to accumulate so many diving hours, sort of like a pilot has to have so many uh, flight hours to move up in rank. I believe that's how it is with a diver, and that's what he came to the Philippines for six months for. He rented his condominium from six months. And of course, he eventually did meet a woman, but that wasn't the reason he came here. And it just, I was just like, wow, I mean, my chin hit the ground. I couldn't believe it. And that was just one of the first wow moments that I had over here. I've had so many. The next one that I had was my first trip to Pang Lao Bahal. And I had made a reservations for a hotel right on Alona Beach, right on the beach the White Sand Beach in Panglao. And at this time in 2010, the strip wasn't as, uh, they've really renovated it and they've really modernized it and fixed it up now. So now the taxi can take you practically to the beach. It can take you to the beach. But at that time, it dropped you right at the bend. You had to get out with your luggage and you had to walk down a hill. And you still couldn't see the ocean. I remember walking down the hill, you know, I'm struggling with my luggage, you know, because I didn't want her to carry any luggage. And we get to the hotel and, you know, get in there and everything. And I said, that's the maid. I said, where's the beach? And she said, just follow this sidewalk down. It'll take you straight to the beach. And the further I walked down the side, 
the sidewalk, the beach start rising up in front of me. And it was a sight, man, for sore eyes, man. It was one of the most magnificent things I had ever seen in 2010. Alona Beach is a real popular place here now. And it was then, but not so much. I mean, and I saw that white sand beach, that blue-green ocean, and these ships just waiting out there to take people island hopping. I mean, I mean, it was just something that, look, country boy from Kentucky, you know, and I've been to Mexico and places like that before, but it was nothing like what I saw there. Then, of course, you know, I had the, the beautiful young lady, the mother of my son was with me, and I'm, the next morning I'm eating breakfast on the beach, and I'm just looking out on the ocean, and man, it was just something that I'll never forget. And I've had, you know, just wild moment after wild moment after wild moment, guys. You know, so even if you come, I can't tell you why to come here, but I'm going to tell you, if you're going to stay here for any considerable period of time, it's not going to be for a woman unless you're just one of them weird old guys, and y'all know what I'm talking about, who just travel to Southeast Asia. Because one of my subscribers said it best. He said, Southeast Asia just has a different type of expat over here. And he's right, you know, but it hasn't kept me here. The 365 days of sunshine has kept me here. The magnificent geography of this place has kept me here. It's more than just white sand beaches. Some of the mountain ranges here, if I had a better camera, they're right outside my house. They're right outside my window. I can't reach them with my, my, with my iPhone. I've got a nice Nikon, a Nikon uh, camera in there, but I need a memory uh, card to really focus in and get some real good pictures. But that's why I opened up my video with that cloud formation. Did you see those clouds? I mean, trust me, and I'm not the only one that said it. I should have done this a long time ago. The Philippines has some of the most beautiful clouds and cloud formations that you will ever see in your life. I only used to see clouds like that when I was a child. I don't see them anymore in the states where I'm from. I mean, look, it looks like I could just reach up and grab those clouds, they low hanging, they're just thick and fluffy, and you see how blue and clear the sky is? It doesn't even seem real. See, that's the beauty of the Philippines. That's the cake that I tell you guys about. The Philippines is the cake. The woman, the smiling faces, the food, and all that other stuff, it's the icing, guys. And if you're like me, sometimes, depending on who makes the cake, I can eat the cake without the icing. If I could do it all over again, I would slow walk with those relationships, with meeting women and all that. Man, I would explore this place to the fullest, okay? I'm going to do a whole video on my number one spot in the Philippines, where I'm going to move when this pandemic is over with and probably stay there for the rest of my life, Sikihoa Island. I mean, it's just a picturesque place, white sand beaches everywhere. The tourists that you see there, they're not really tourists, they're residents. Very few tourists come there. I mean, very, very few. It's an isolated place. But I'm only 35 minutes by ocean jet from uh, Dumaguete. If I get bored and I want to go to uh, eat at the Yellow Cab pizza place, or if I want to go to the mall, or if I want to walk along the boulevard or something like that, see, Sikihoa Island. But another wild moment that I had, and I think I told you about this, was one of the first times I came to the Philippines. I had made reservations for Tagaytay. I flew into Manila. I was so excited, I didn't get no sleep. And went up to Tagaytay, did that whole tour, and all I remember, ladies and gentlemen, was waiting on the bus to go back, and I'm standing on the road, I remember looking out, and seeing the Tao, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, volcano. It's right in the center of Tao Lake, and it's something that will go to my grave with me. I mean, it's something that I had pictures of on my old little digital camera that I had. I took so many pictures of it. It was probably the only pictures that I had. Uh, it was just Magnificent is the only word I can really, uh, that really comes to mind to try to describe that. It's nothing that I would see 
in Louisville, Kentucky. I mean, uh, it was just Komodi's Island when I came over here. Uh, Barakai when I, uh, not so much Barakai in the White Sand Beach, but I had rented a sailboat, a sailboat for, for $60. And it took me all around Barakai Island. And man, it's, you talking about somebody being rocketed into the fourth dimension. Yeah, that was me. And that's what kept me over here, guys. See, from that little shallow uh, knucklehead that came over here in 2009, man, I've been changed. It's, I've done a 180. I'm no longer that guy. This place has changed me. It has nothing to do with a woman. I mean, really, I mean, yeah, I've got a beautiful wife and family over here that makes me happy, that you know keeps me from being lonely and isolated and losing my mind, but the Philippines is the cake, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the cake, with or without the icing when you get over here. And I'm gonna tell you what, you're gonna see some of the most magnificent, remarkable, spectacular, every other word that you can use, sites here that you've ever seen in your life. That's why the Philippines, from 2009 when I came here, it was only like two million tourists. 10 years later, almost nine million. And if it wasn't for this pandemic, it would have been blown out the roof by now. This place is fast becoming one of the fastest growing tourist spots in the world. It's not because of women, it's because of places I told you about. So thanks for stopping by today. You know, I was just kind of excited today because when I think about stuff like that, man, see, this pandemic does that to me. I know what's waiting when it opens back up. And I can't wait, man. I'm like a little kid on Christmas Eve. I cannot wait. They're getting this place together. I know because I see it. They're painting. They're getting it spiffy for us, ladies and gentlemen. And when you get over, especially your first time, man, it's going to blow you away. And I guarantee you, the icing that you have with you, you may not even need it. So thanks a lot. I appreciate you stopping by. If you're in America, it's very late right now. And I hope that you help somebody before you went to bed. In the Philippines, excuse me, it's about 10 a.m. We got the whole rest of the day to help somebody. We must help somebody. Helping somebody today may save your life. Because if I don't know anything else, when we help other people, we help ourselves. Stay safe, stay COVID-free, and I'll see you next time.